F-150. She pulls a horse trailer with it. Absolutely love it. Uh, shout it out. Let us let us know in the getter chat uh, what you're driving. Uh, hopefully it's not a Tesla. Hopefully it's uh, it's a pickup truck. And, I, uh, I don't think there's American. very many EVs in there. I don't think there's a lot of them. Not a lot of EVs in the getter chat. Uh, let's go so. to the middle of the country. A nice gentleman named Richard Kaysen is a radio talk show host, the conservative 1240 KFMO. He's in uh, Van Buren, Missouri, uh, right there in the heartland. We thought it'd be nice to talk to a real American voice. Richard, good morning. Live from Van Buren, Missouri. Thanks for having me on today, Ed and Karen. Appreciate it. Hey, if, if I, I look a little disheveled, I, I got to apologize. I was just helping push an electric car off the side of the road about five minutes before we <laughs> came in. I love it. No ex explanation needed. You looked fine. But now I get it. It's a, you're looking a little haggard there. Maybe you haven't shaved in a little while. Mm. You were pushing the Tesla. Uh, let's put that up on the screen, guys. Uh, I know you have it ready. Uh, we want anyone who was uh, getting coffee uh, last uh, segment. So here, think about that, Richard. Uh, well, so what do we got? About six coal miners, or at least maybe it's five coal miners and the Looks tourist like the guy, in the shorts, yeah, right? Yeah, in the shorts. So five coal miners and a D.C. tourist in West Virginia, coal miners pushing a Tesla. What a wonderful symbol. Not a symbol that's good for the left, but what a wonderful symbol. Your thoughts, Richard? Well, I actually think the only thing uh, missing from that picture is a big Biden 2024 logo across the <laughs> across the front of it, because I think that's a pretty good analogy for his entire uh, presidency. Um, you know, Joe Biden, the, the state of our union is horrible, and it's because of him and his uh, loyalty, in my opinion, to the uh, Chinese Communist Party, the uh, the common refrain from a lot of what I would call know-nothing liberals is that uh, presidents don't set gas prices. Well, when President Trump increased domestic oil drilling, fuel prices decreased. Biden, his first day in office when he took his hand off that Amway catalog or whatever he took his fake oath of office onto, the first thing he did was cancel uh, the Keystone Pipeline, and he killed domestic drilling. And that's the whole reason why the economy is this way. And he owns it, and he probably owns that electric car, too. Yeah, he does. And I think, Karen, that's interesting. When, when Richard says uh, it's the symbol of, for, for Biden, he should run on out of gas, Biden 2024, out, out of, of gas, gas yeah. running out of steam. Yeah, you can come up with a lot of taglines for him, none of which are good. Were you surprised, I wonder, at that speech that he gave, that dark and disturbing speech that we saw last week, based on what you've seen as a real American out there? Was that too far? Did you feel that they pushed the envelope a little too far this time? He, he definitely pushed the envelope. Uh, honestly, the only thing I was shocked by was that he got through it because he was coughing and hacking through most of it. And I've noticed that any time he's about to lie really big, that's when, the <clears throat> that's when that starts. <laughs> but um, as, as he got further into it, I, it, well, a friend of mine at church, he asked me if I saw it, and he said, yeah, did you catch Joe Biden's red sermon the other night? Uh, because yeah. that's exactly what it was, the most just divisive, uh, frankly, unfriendly, and un-American thing I've watched from an American president, legitimate or illegitimate. So, yeah. Well, and it's pretty interesting because we were at the rally in Pennsylvania with Donald Trump, uh, and Karen can I attest to it. the fact that, yeah, and, and you watched us. Well, that's, I appreciate that. So I want to get your thoughts because I just want to frame it this way, which is when you listen to that speech and Joe Biden's vision of the MAGA community. I saw people coming together as patriots. I saw people chanting USA, USA. And yeah, Donald Trump throws shots, and he could be dark someday. He could be tough, which he is. But he, he shaped a vision that I thought was much more positive about the future of America. I, he was in it, you know, and it, at the end of the day, I mean, we're, we're following somebody who we think is a great man who can make a difference in this country, but the real people are the one who are pushing the agenda. Mm -hmm. They're the ones who want to get him voted in to represent them. That's the difference between Democrats and Republicans right now. Republicans are looking for someone to lead them. The Democrats don't have anybody to lead them, period. There are no leaders. In well, the there's Party. the word salad vice president, I guess, Richard. Kamala Harris could always step in, LOL. Well, uh, interesting you bring that up because it, it's my opinion just based on everything that we've uh, seen so far, just his, his record and the way things are going. I think he has probably about 85 days left in this term. I think uh, uh, if the Democrats end up losing, which all the polls and even most Democrats are, are bracing for, uh, they're going to lose. 
And then uh, Biden is going to realize that he got to play president for a year and a half, couple of years. And I think he's going to be asked by the Democrats to kindly step aside, let Kamala step up so that she can nominate a, a new vice president. At first, I thought it was going to be Hillary Clinton so that they could get approval on her while there's still a Democrat run Congress. Now I'm thinking it's probably Gavin Newsom, given all the yeah. visits he's been making to the White House. But Biden, as far as his time in the White House goes, it, it's really down to weeks, I believe it. And I hope he's watching that right now. And I hope he takes that to heart and maybe even resigns a little bit sooner. Interesting. That's uh, I, I the wonder view if he's from watching. Home. I wonder if he watches us in the morning. Real America's <laughs> oh, he, he's, really hope he is. <laughs> he's probably trying to learn from uh, real Americans, get the real perspective. <laughs> Hey, you know, Richard, you said that he gave his oath on the Amway catalog. Are we sure it wasn't the Communist Manifesto? Oh, wow. You guys are outdoing each other. This <laughs> Maybe. Morning. I don't know. I'm just saying. Something. I don't know. Uh, Richard, I got to say, it was a lot of fun to have you on for the first time. Lo love to have you back, uh, getting that uh, perspective from the middle of the country. Richard Kaysen, check him out. Uh, he's on frankspeech.com. He's also a radio uh, talk show host. 1240 KFMO. I'm sure you can find him online. Uh, what time are you on, Richard? Uh, I'm on from, uh, well, I guess Eastern time. It's uh, 10 to midnight Eastern, 9 to 11 Central in the time zone where I'm at, at uh, 1240 KFMO, just south of St. Louis in Park Hills, and uh, KFMO.com, frankspeech.com on Mondays. All right. I cool. uh, appreciate having you on, Richard, uh, and we'll see you soon.